This is the 13 inch M3 MacBook Air. It looks exactly the same as the 13 inch M2 MacBook Air, but there's a few key differences. I've got both of my hands right here, so let's talk about it. Physically, almost everything about the M3 2024 version of the MacBook Air is exactly the same as the one released in 2022. You probably wouldn't be able to tell that I was using M2 MacBook Air footage mixed right into this video if it wasn't a different color and I didn't tell you. The major difference between the M2 version and the M3 version of this laptop is obviously in their name the M3 chip. And well, this new anodization method that Apple is using for the midnight colorway of this laptop. The M3 is supposed to handle fingerprints a lot better. For some context, the M2 MacBook Air in midnight is such a fingerprint magnet. If the FBI wanted to match fingerprints, all they really have to do is look to see if that suspect ever touched a midnight MacBook Air. That's how bad it was. The M3 Air is supposedly better, but I only have the M2 version here, while I have the M3 version in starlight. And the starlight color is much more muted than the old gold color they had on the M1 MacBook Air, and is a lot lighter and brighter than the natural titanium that's on the iPhone 15 Pro. All that being said about colors, I do warn people that are interested in the midnight version of this laptop to consider how the area around the ports will hold up because plugging in charging cables or accessories could wear down the areas around the ports, revealing the raw metal underneath. Again, this is on the old version and I have no idea how these will wear on the new anodized midnight color, but time will tell. But besides that, everything else about the M3 MacBook Air feels just like the M2 MacBook Air. Speaker sounds similar, screens look similar, webcam looks similar, keyboard and trackpad feel similar, the list just goes on and on and on. So instead of focusing on what's the same, since there's plenty of reviews out there, including one from someone you may know, let's talk about what the M3 brings to this laptop. It's a little bit faster than the outgoing model and play games a little bit better. That's really the main advantages here. Performing general everyday tasks on the M3 MacBook Air feels similar to the previous model. Everything just works as intended, things open fast, and for my general productivity tasks, it works great until you really start to push it in more intense tasks. In video editing, I see small hitches here and there for my 4K video workload with light color adjustments, stabilization, and multiple layers of 4K video. I don't recommend this for gaming, just due to how few games are currently supported on MacBooks, but the Air does okay for a thin and night laptop while gaming. But since this is a fanless device, it does warm up a lot during gaming and you definitely feel it. The base model M3 MacBook Air starts with 256 gigabytes of SSD storage. Here's where it could potentially become a problem. The base model M3 MacBook Air only comes with eight gigabytes of RAM in its base model. And because of that, if you do more intensive tasks, including gaming, which needs RAM for both the CPU and GPU, the machine goes into swap, which means it uses its SSD as extra RAM. But SSDs are significantly slower than RAM and SSDs will wear down over time. So my suggestion for this laptop is if you can, and if you think you need it, get 16 gigabytes of RAM. I don't believe in extreme future proofing, but these M series MacBooks have a good history of staying really good for a long time now. I'd recommend it if you wanna have a good time with this machine in four or five years. That being said, Apple doesn't make it easy to get that 16 gigabytes of RAM specifically for the MacBook Air. The default configuration, the model that ships the fastest, requires you drop $1,600 to get the M3 MacBook Air with 16 gigabytes of RAM. You could do a custom config that keeps the 256 gigabyte SSD and bumps the price $200 for the extra RAM, but that takes more time to ship. Also, major retailers like Best Buy don't sell custom Apple configs and only the default ones that Apple's laid out on their website. But I noticed on more niche, I don't wanna say niche because they're still major retailers, you can get the custom configs like on B&H or Adorama. So that's just some food for thought. And the last thing I wanna note about this M3 chip and the benefits it brings is that it also allows the M3 MacBook Air to use two external monitors at the same time when the lid is closed. Previous versions of the M series MacBook Airs did not. And if you open it up, it just defaults to a single external display and the MacBook's display. So if you can't decide between the 13 or 15 inch M3 MacBook Air and you primarily use external monitors, you might wanna just save the $200 and just get the 13 inch. The 15 inch, at least in my opinion, is more catered towards someone who's constantly on the go and needs screen real estate on the go. And if that's not you, you can save a decent chunk of change with the 13 inch. Okay, so if you're looking at the 13 or 15 inch M3 MacBook Air, what other devices should you consider? I'm gonna start with new options, but there are refurbished options too, and we'll talk about those in a bit. With the addition of the M3 MacBook Air, Apple pushed the M2 MacBook Air into a lower starting price of $1,000, 
with the M3 being at $1,100 and the M1 MacBook Air getting pushed out of their lineup completely. I'll miss it because that was actually a pretty great laptop. If you're the most bare bones user who only web browses or only checks their email, you might want to consider the M2 MacBook Air that they still sell. If you do a bit more work than that, or maybe you have a computer focused hobby like photo or video editing, or need to use your laptop for basic office productivity, get the M3 MacBook Air with 16 gigabytes of RAM and you're good. Refurbished options are great too, especially Apple's refurbished machines. I've had nothing but a great time using devices I've purchased from their refurb store so much that I think that they're a much better value than their new counterparts spec for spec. However, these are still typically older devices. Apple has been supporting their older laptops with OS updates for around seven years now, if you look on the latest Sonoma page. And as of the timing of this video, the M1 is almost four years old now. So that's half of its OS life cycle already over with. Now, if you don't care about that sort of thing or can just get a refurbed M3 Air in a few months, that's awesome. You can get a great deal. But there is also a good argument to say that you can get a new, brand new, M3 MacBook Air on sale in a month or two. But again, something I think people should consider when buying refurbished is roughly how much longer this device will get OS updates. So at this point, I guess it's conclusion time. What do I think of the M3 MacBook Air? The M3 MacBook Air is a refinement to the new design that Apple brought in with the M2 MacBook Air. It adds almost nothing new, but a minor improvement to performance, which we all kind of expect, but also finally adds in a feature that base M1 series Apple laptops were missing. It sucks that Apple is insistent on keeping eight gigabytes of RAM on this machine as standard and makes it difficult or price prohibitive to get 16 gigabytes of RAM. Besides that, this is a super minor update that might appeal more to Mac users that aren't on Apple M chips yet, because if you're still on an Intel based Mac, this is a good spot to jump in. But if you are currently using an Apple Silicon Mac, I don't think you'll be upgrading for a long while. Anyway, what do you personally think? Does dual monitor support make the MacBook Air more enticing? Or does this price cut to the old M2 MacBook Air make that more enticing to you now? Are you considering a different laptop altogether? Let me know your thoughts down below and I'll talk to you all next time. Bye.